Children's Charity Ashton. Um, and we have been um, working with schools for um, about 13 years now through our awards programme and through different programmes that we do. And this year we're really delighted to be launching Let's Go Zero. And it's such a treat to be sharing it with everyone at London Climate Action Week as well. So Let's Go Zero is um, supported by lots of different organisations. We have a whole wonderful team, a, a coalition of organisations that are working to help schools to be more sustainable, that are supporting this campaign. So it's not just us here to share it with you. We're so delighted that it's something that's really a collaborative effort that's bringing all of the collective superpowers of the great people that are trying to support schools to be more sustainable, bringing everyone together, everyone's expertise and their networks to make this as strong as it can be. So this campaign shows that schools want to be a force for change. They want to be part of the solution and they want to stand with the students and take climate action. That's the idea of the campaign to really raise the voices of schools across the UK. Schools can sign up to the campaign and when they do, they do that through the website. And when they're doing that, they're saying three things. They're saying they want to be zero carbon by 2030, that they're taking action to get there and that they want more help to do more. So I'll break those down a little bit more now. So they want to be zero carbon by 2030. It's about showing ambition. It's about being bold and brave and schools saying, we want to be part of the solution. We want to lead this. We want to lead in our communities. We want to lead our students and their families and really show what's possible and how you can be zero carbon by 2030. And we know it's incredibly hard. It's a big challenge. This is an enormous challenge that we're all facing, but schools want to be the ones that try and get there and get there first. So they're taking action now is the second thing. So we don't mind what you're doing as a school, as long as you're doing something, as long as you've started, you've started down that road to doing something. And for some schools, they might just be doing small projects within their, within their schools. Others might be doing everything. They might be all on the eco bling, they'll be, they'll have ticked every box and there's schools in every point of the journey that are, that are able to, to take part in this and know that they're taking some action themselves, they're doing whatever they can already. And the third thing, that they want more help to do more, this is really important, that we, they're saying they want to work with government, they want to, they want to help government to help schools, not just their own schools, but other schools to be able to do so much more and to be able to, to take more action. And that might be through finance, it might be through giving them a mandate, might be through regulation. There's all kinds of tricks in that bag that we can use to help schools to be able to do more. And they also think it should be a bit more of a level playing field, that all schools should be judged in the same way about this. So what is a zero carbon school? So our definition, what we use is we think it's a school that on its site and in its activities, it doesn't contribute to climate change through carbon emissions. And for the techie amongst you, that's about that's talking about going to scope three for schools. Schools, um, the impact that they have a carbon impact across lots of different activities. Um, and we think that within your school, you should be looking at all the different things that you're doing. You think you should be looking at all the different areas where you can impact the your carbon footprint and so we're working with lots of different organizations to see how we can make schools really explore their wider footprint now this slide here shows you some of the different areas that we think have you have an impact as a school so energy use in your buildings procurement food water travel waste and school grounds so, for example, the data that we're seeing shows that sometimes up to 40% of a school's footprint is actually through their procurement, through what they're buying. And sometimes it can be as, as little as 20% can be from their energy use in their building. So we really have to look at that whole picture of a school and a school's footprint to know really how they can be reducing it and getting it to zero. And th this slide also shows you loads of brilliant organisations, just a sample really, of the wonderful organisations that are doing things that can help schools already. And we want more schools to take more action, to do more of these, these activities and programmes and plans and use all these resources that will help them to do more. So um, let, Let's Go Zero isn't just about signing up to the campaign. It's not just a, it's not a petition. It's about taking more action. So early in next year, and we think this will probably be about February, March time, we're hoping that to introduce an action planning toolkit, which will be um, 
brought to us with the wonderful people at Global Action Plan um, who um, bring you Transform Our World, the website. And we're going to put the action planning toolkit on that website. And what will happen is your school can go on there. You can look and see, right, what am I doing already? It will survey what actions you've taken already. Um, and a little bit about what your parameters are, so maybe what size school, where you are, what you've done already, what your funding setup is, and then it will give you a whole lot of options about what you can do next. And it will give you an indication of how much that might cost, how much time it might take, but then also looking at the carbon impact it's going to have. Because we want schools to start taking a much more measured and meaningful decision basis on what they do next so that they can really get more bang for their buck. So the next slide just gives you a little bit of um, contact information. So there's the website, that's where schools sign up. So let's go zero.org. That's how you can find out some more information. There's a frequently asked question section on that. Um, the schools sign up through that website as a portal there that they do that um, through. We're also next week gonna have a, a little ticker tape thing of school, all the names of the schools that have already signed up on there. And also you can see um, who, who's supporting it, all the different organizations that are supporting the campaign. So if you have any questions at all, either you're a school or you're working with schools and you have any questions and you want to get more information or get some more materials to help share this with other schools, then just get in touch through let's go zero at ashton.org. And also please do follow us on Twitter and tweet away about this exciting new campaign and the Twitter handle is there. So now I'm going to have a chat with Martin. So Martin, if, I, if I, we can magically bring you onto the stage. There we go. Um, so we'll just get you to unmute yourself. There we are. Perfect. So Martin, lovely to have you here. Lovely to have you join lovely me to for be this here. session. So now Martin, so he's um, head of geography at Glebe School in Bromley, um, and he specialises in outdoor learning and special educational needs. Now, mm. to embarrass Martin, I'm going to let you know that he's been there for 25 years. Yep. Wow, amazing. <laughs> that is, that's, yeah. that's a real achievement. He's also the chair of the London Sustainable Schools Forum. And he, uh, is, he creates a podcast, which is called Doorways to Sustainable Schools. And in fact, yesterday, at London Climate Action Week, he launched this new podcast, which is the Magical Orange Doorway, which I think he's going to tell you a bit more about. So Martin, brilliant to have you here. Thank you for joining nice to be here. me. So I think I'm going to start off with my question, which is about what's the favourite thing that you've done at your school um, that's helped you to cut the carbon within your school? Yeah, well, it's it's actually based around the the new story, but it, it's I've been doing it for most of my time at Glebe. So my school is a special school. And we learned very quickly, or I learned very quickly, that um, to engage my young people in geography more practical approaches to the subject were better. So we started to do lots of outdoor learning and it's developed from there into a whole range of things. And as part of that, we do a lot of gardening, we do a lot of food growing, we do tree planting and so on, and we link them back to the curriculum. And it's it's brilliant, I love doing it, but the, the magical orange doorway is the thing I'm so excited about. It's, it's basically uh, using a storytelling approach to introduce a concept of sustainable food and you'll have to listen to it and i would love you to listen to it please and tell me what you think because it's my first ever attempt at writing anything like this but the concept in school is it's going to be a school project for young people in my school and a, a refuge in peru that we link with um, to look at some simple foods that we use and to think of them more sustainably uh, and at a school level it's going to be very sort of simple we'll be we'll be talking what's and all about things that go right and go wrong um we're gonna run this project to cop 26 um and at a second level there's going to be kind of a higher level well maybe not higher adult level discussion um about sustainable food and about linking with with a school in peru and so on and we'll run that parallel to it so um it's really exciting and one of the things i'm excited about with let's go zero is I have no idea how a project like this will reduce our carbon um, uh, carbon footprint. I, I really don't. And I think, you know, it, it's, it may well be that we find out this is um, not the best way to reduce our carbon footprint. There are other more dramatic ways. It doesn't mean we'll change it. Um, or it may well be it leads to particular actions through the project as we go on that we think if we did X instead of Y, for example, it might 
um, linked to procurement discussions about food for the school um, canteen and so on. Um, so you bring in food miles, et cetera, et cetera. But, but it's, it's very much like Let's Go Zero. We're right at the start of the project. It literally started yesterday. Very exciting and with a lovely group of people and really excited to develop the project with Peru because I think carbon um, reduction can get very dry and technical. And it, it really is all about humanity as well. And I think linking with the people in Peru reminds us that there are real issues. We can't just take it for granted. We need to learn how to speak to them in a different language and so on. So that's all tied in. There's a Spanish element to it, working with my colleague, who's the Spanish teacher at the school on that as well. So yeah, really excited about that. Let's see where it goes. Please listen and tell me, be honest. I, I would like honest feedback. That's Honestly. fantastic to hear and it's such sounds like such an interesting project and just to let you know we will put a link um at the end of the session to everything that we talk about that, that has Thank a link you. to it so you'll get that link everyone and you can go and listen as well so next question really is why is climate action important now for schools to be taking i mean given everything else that we're doing yeah, with covid yeah. and bubbles and all important yeah. to be taking action now i i, I think probably because of everything that's happening. I think, um, you know, I very much come a little bit, like I said with the previous question, um, very much come at climate action with two-pronged approach that um, young people last year were crying out for schools and government to do something about climate action. They didn't feel enough was being done. Um, and, you know, we tried to respond to that. And I think, um, I very much feel that young people, you know, they have a right, obviously, they're terrified about, they hear all these stories about what's going on, they have a right to know what's going on, and they, but they also have a right to learn and not be terrified. And we, I think we as adults have a duty to offer them hope. And I think that brings me into the second part of it, which is climate action, that you can't offer, you can't lie to young people, you have to tell them the truth about these things. But you can offer real hope through real practical solutions. So, for example, I, had, I did a podcast with Annette Figueredo, which is, we actually re-promoted today. She's from the Greater London Authority, and they've done the most remarkable document for schools, an advice document about how schools can become more climate resilient with some really practical, sensible steps that schools can take. And young people can get involved in that, and they can see that, OK, we accept that London is probably going to get hotter, it's probably going to have more droughts, it's probably going to suffer from extreme extreme weather events and flooding. But there are things that you can do in your school to mitigate some of those things. So you might not have the power to stop climate um, change in its tracks, but you do have the power to make your school a little bit more climate resilient. So that's one thing that you can do. And I think, you know, there's lots of things that are out there where people have shown there are new inventions, new ways to behave, new practices that, that are out there already that, that schools can adopt and we can show young people that offer positivity and hope. And it's just that, that idea of and not moving away from the reality of climate change, but by taking action, the physical act. I don't even mean political action, there's nothing wrong with that, but just some kind of response to it instead of just worrying and feeling that you are doing something that is genuinely helping your situation. I think it's really, really important. And, you know, I'm still learning, like with everybody else, and even at this week, there's just been so many fantastic ideas and we'll summarize them in a podcast uh, in a week or two. But um, yeah, so I think it's at the moment with COVID, with all the anxieties, the young people's well-being and our own well-being, um, we need to feel that there are things to do, that there are things we can do, not just lobby um, government and hope that they do stuff. We need to feel we can actually do something ourselves now that does make some difference. Okay, thank you. And I've just had a comment to say, can we um, share that document? Yes, we can. We yeah, don't have it right now. Actually, we'll I it. can tell you where to find it. If you oh. go, um, it's on the GLA website, but if you go to the link for my podcast, if you find the podcast for Annette Figueredo. Uh, it's actually at the top today, but tomorrow it will be replaced by another. I think it was episode six or seven. Find that if you go to the link which has further information, the, the document's on there. Um, but if there's any problems, get in touch with me, but um, it's on there now. Uh, but if you search for it under the GLA website, it's there too. 
Brilliant. And we'll also try and find it and we'll put it in the thanks for coming to the seminar email that yeah. you'll get, uh, I think, tomorrow. Um, so we'll try and send it on that as well. OK, so last question for you, Martin, from me is um, why do you think it's important for schools to sign up to be part of the movement that is Let's Go Zero? Yeah, so I think, again, for a, a number of reasons. So the first is um, that the more schools that join up, the more um, the more you feel you're part of a movement. So that simple thing of feeling you're not on your own. There are other people around the country that believe in the same thing. As a teacher, as the young people you're working with, just for your emotional well-being, that, that's good. And to be part of that kind of club that, that believes that more needs to happen. Second thing, the more people that sign up, the more chance there is to persuade the big players in the game to do something about it, the government, the policy makers, the corporates that are involved that can make a real difference at a systemic level. It, we, we're going to have far more impact if they see that schools are willing, not just willing by shouting, but actually every school by part of Let's Go Zero will be doing practical things in their school by the very nature of the climate of, of the Let's Go Zero campaign. So they're not just talking about it these schools will be doing something they can offer kind of that good practice to these the government and third sector and you know it's not about being oppositional it's about working together and i think that's what i love about let's go zero it's such a collaborative coalition it's about getting everybody and anybody it's got this this idea that um the problem of climate change is too big for any sort of little cliques to try and take on themselves. We all need to get involved in, in the best way that suits us from whichever way we can. So if you're in a school, in the way that suits you best at a school. If you're um, in a third sector, get involved and promote your um, organization and badge it with Let's Go Zero, because I can guarantee pretty much all the third sector groups working with schools on sustainability will have something to offer to the Let's Go Zero campaign. And then that just, it just is a real message to people. And that kind of collaborative approach goes to those big players. It's not about fighting with government and um, local authorities. So it's about working with them and trying to find solutions because they've got agendas, we understand that. And like in schools, schools have exams to work for. We, we're so pressured with things. So part of the, the role of Let's Go Zero is to highlight how we can do these things in an already busy timetable in it with so many other things that schools are expected to do. So part of that shared learning will be to show that these things can be done. They can keep your head teacher happy. They can help you get your exam results. They can make Ofsted feel really, really impressed with you. So that, and it's much easier if we're not recreating the wheel, if we're working together and sharing that. Okay, thank you, Martin. So the first Pleasure. question that's come in, um, I I'll answer this one. It's a it's an easy one for me. So which schools um, can sign up? So any school within the UK. Uh, so any school aged four to eighteen. Um, but to be honest, anywhere that considers themselves to be an educational setting within the UK um, can sign up to to the campaign. Um, and it's it's an easy process to do. You go to the website and you sign up. Um, We've had questions before about can um, uh, SEN schools or nursery schools. Yes, every school, every school, anywhere you're educating children in a way. Yeah, can I jump in there, Alex? So, so my school is an SEN school, and actually, part of the point of us doing the magical doorway project is it, it's a story. So it starts off with a story. A story is good for anyone, but it's really been we targeted at my year sevens at our SEN. So if if um, primary school kids looked at it, they'd probably be age seven or eight or something like that. But it's just, it's partly to show a case study of a, a place that, that has SEN kids to show that anyone can get involved. That's partly why we've done it. Excellent. So, um, and the next question, which is for you, Martin, I'm gonna let okay, you answer you. this one is, um, what is the first thing a school should do to get started on cutting yeah. their carbon? What is their first, easy first step? Yeah, get outside the classroom is what I say to pretty much anything to do with sustainability. I think cutting your carbon is, is an element of place-based learning and which is what sustainable schools are all about. And it, it's about accepting the place you're in, the school you're in, and that you have a role or can have a role in making a difference in that school. And the, you, it's hard to do that if you're confined in your classroom. Now, at the moment, that, that may be trickier 
myself, I do lots of outdoor learning. My colleague is shielding. So I'm not going outside at the moment, um, but we're, we're adapting. But you can step outside generally and you can find ways or you can bring the outdoors into your classroom. You can, there are ways to do it. And I think, but we would say um, when we talk about this type of approach, we would say sign up for outdoor classroom day persuade your head teacher if you've not done anything that for one day a year you're going to get out maybe just for one lesson put things in place to do that so it, some schools they do it all the time it's no big deal for your school it might be tricky find a way to just get out of the classroom and just think about what you do it doesn't even need to be um, trying to reduce carbon to start off with it could be just making the point of getting outside it could be just reading outside or something it just I think the first thing is just to put the structures in place and you're going to need to leave the classroom to do those things. So if you're not able to do that, work out how to do that, that works safely for you in your school. Excellent. That's fantastic. The more, can I just, the say, more the second, we can can I just say a second thing very quickly yep. on the back of that, when you really want to, so just very quickly, then sign up for eco schools. It's just the most amazing project and it starts at a really, really, really simple level. And that will give you, so if you're asking, how can I reduce carbon? Yes, step outside, but you're probably thinking, yeah, but I wanna do some sustainability work. Go to EcoSkills website, sign up, get started on the process. Well, that's fantastic, Martin. I think you've just answered the next question already, which is how <laughs> do we link with EcoSchools? Yeah. EcoSchools is brilliant. It's a certification scheme. We recommend it to all schools. Great idea, really good. Split it up into different topic areas, split it up, really great way for a school to get recognized for the work they're doing. We work really closely with Eco Schools. They are part of the coalition for the campaign, and we are looking at how how uh, Let's Go Zero and Eco Schools can be really reinforced together. But uh, as part of our, you just need to take one action to be part of Let's Go Zero, and that action can be Eco Schools. So yeah, yeah definitely recommend it all. Yeah, the way. and I think there's a difference as well. So so every third sector group has a different role, and um, Eco schools role is essentially it's an awarding body for good practice. And I think if you think of it that way, then it allows you also to get involved in other things. So you can be involved in Let's Go Zero. You might be involved in a food project of your own or with other people. It's OK. They can all work together. And, and, and why not? If you're getting more help from different people, probably to deliver one particular project in your school, take it, I'd say. So the next, so we've had a question about um, looking at lobbying for policy change. So um, that really is, a, so it's something that we, as part of joining the campaign, this isn't about schools lobbying government. And that's quite important. This is about schools working with government. Mm. This is about schools saying to government, look, we want to, we want to be part of a solution. How can we all work together to get more action? And more change and to support schools and that's a really big message of course the students are wonderful students will never stop them from lobbying and that's brilliant and we support that the work that they're doing with all of that so if they want to do the the no more fossil fuels campaigns great we'll, you know we'll be there supporting them but this let's go zero is not about lobbying it's not about teachers standing there with placards yeah. it is about a sensible civilized conversations that create more change and more more action so um, the next thing is about certificates and advocates. So yes, we um, as you sign up, you become a, a Let's Go Zero school. Um, you can use the, the logo and, and tell everyone about it. We'd love you to tell everyone about it. We want you to really shout to the world about the fact that you are there as, as, a, as a school that's got this ambition. Um, but it's not a certification. It doesn't mean that you're at a certain point in your journey. So it is about just saying that you want to get there. So there is, it's not a, cert, a certificate, a certificate in that way. So that's that's a sort of slightly different way to, to look at it. Um, how can local authorities get involved with Let's Go Zero? So we have had lots of local authorities um, work with us over the years, but also I've had a lot of extra ones, new ones get in touch since we launched last week. So we are delighted to work with local authorities, any local authority who'd like to work with their school, get in touch, let's go zero um, uh, at ashton.org. I'm really happy to have a conversation with you and to talk to you about how other local authorities are doing it, how they're using the tool to talk to schools about what they can do and to show their ambition as, a, as an area. So please do get involved, really, really, really happy to, to talk to you more about that. 
Yeah, can I jump in there on um, the, the mayor's office as well? So the mayor of London's really uh, supportive of the um, London Climate Action Week. And, you know, obviously Let's Go Zero fits in really well with, with that. So I think there won't be, we work with a lot of people in the mayor's office as well. And I think they'll be really, really keen to get involved because it's a, it's a great initiative for schools. And the, the mayor is really keen to work with schools. And, you know, he's, he's got a great track record of working on um, air um, pollution. And also he's really keen to get involved in working on climate reduction as well as climate change, sorry. Um, carbon reduction so yeah great we, we're working directly with the gla team to yeah. um, communicate this out to the schools and also through their really good refit program which is great yeah. yeah London schools so um we are nearly out of time so one more question so tony says have we got a relationship with northumberland northumberland county council no we don't we'd love to if you want to introduce us that will be brilliant so we've got um the, uh, the website is there so please do go to it and have a little look um, and and see what you can do and do get in touch with us uh, to find out more. Um, it'd be really good to-, to Alex, can I just you. jump in? Yeah, sorry, Deborah. sorry. I just see a question from Deborah um, about uh, school resources. Um, Deborah, one of the things we're doing with, um, in London anyway, is we're, we're working with lots of partners to try and support schools. So for example, we had a meeting with, um, I think it was five universities the other night to look at how universities can work with schools. And it's incredible to think, to, to know how much they want to work with schools. I didn't realize that. Um, and they have a wealth of resources. So as part of all these people working together, we're starting to create these dialogues. This is not me spinning it, this is genuinely happening. Um, and we, we hope to be able to, during the year as we go to COP26 to, to discuss these with with let's go zero and, and people involved about what what we can do to help so i do understand um your your question but we are looking at that too excellent well thank you very much everyone for coming please do get in touch with us if you have any questions about the campaign and please do share it with as many schools as you can there's some resources there there's the link to martin's podcast and there's a very short one minute film that you're welcome to share with people as well so thank you to everyone for coming um really nice to see some familiar faces there in the audience as well um so martin thank you so much for joining pleasure, me today pleasure. And, and it's been really great to to have you here for this session so been thank great. you very much to everyone Brilliant. And let me know what you think of the book, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>